Alright guys and girls, what is up? My name is Justin Omoi and I am here with a video to help y'all with your sounds, your styles, and what it be. Today we're talking about Maximus. Maximus is something that people use for mastering because it has many different effects inside of one. I personally don't want to, you know, like use Maximus because I want to have different effects in between these certain effects that are inside of this. But it's alright if you want to use it, you know, nothing bad about it. These effects are like a limiter, a compressor, a noise gate, a ducker, an expander, if you don't know what that is, I'll tell you just now, and a de-esser. If you don't know what expander is, it's basically uh, setting a threshold and then raising after the threshold or maybe before the points. A ducker is the same thing except the opposite, it goes down, duck. All right, so starting from the beginning, what I'm going to do is expand this just like that so we can see things better. All right, I'm hearing a lot of click sounds in my damn thing again I don't know why it's so annoying so I just scaled this down that'll probably help so I'm gonna hit play and you're gonna hear what we are working with basically I'm gonna play a little bit of it all right so what we see here is basically a waveform of the audio that's being played but yes I'm going to go over everything that you should see you should know etc Starting from the left, this is where we're going to begin. We have four different tabs. We have a master tab, a high, a mid, and low, all right? These are going to be the frequency bands, the low, mid, high, master is basically everything put together. And yeah, these are going to be essential when you want to compress one uh, frequency band at a time. And by band, I mean like the low bands, the high, and the mid bands. We could adjust that by going to the bands tab over here and figuring out which hertz we want to keep for the you know respective bands if we want high bands to be from like you know 2k hertz notice 2k is up here we just take this little knob balance it off there let's say low bands we want only 120 and yeah somewhere around there that's what we could do back here in the monitor tab this is where we'll see our audio signal as well as envelopes if we do you know compress and do attacks etc and you'll be able to see different colors and i'll go over that after well when I talk about it now the big question is what is this thing over here this little square with these dots this is an envelope but this is where we'll do the actual compressing except the attack and the release so first I'm going to go into the low tab I'm gonna keep it low and I'm hit that unpause so we'll be able to see what is coming through if we just have this to make things even better I'm going to click this solo button so we'll only hear the lows so I'm gonna hit play and as you see here, we have a boom, boom, boom. We have a signal coming through. Now the signal can be adjusted with the compressing, you know, little knobs here. These are points. We could create more points by right clicking. And this will allow us to make, you know, exceptional. Let's say over here, I want it to be like this. And over here, I want the compression to actually go back up. Yeah. Now these points are going to allow us to set certain thresholds and allow us to do different types of curves, different types of compression. So think of it like compression and compressions. And at the same case, we could do what is known as the ducker and expander. For example, I'm going to put this point right here around negative 16, and I'm going to have this other point just stay right here at zero. I'm going to lower it down. Well, as you see, I already lowered it down. I'm gonna lower it down here so we could reach the uh, signal. If you want, you can hold the left alt button while click and drag to go more precise rather than the snaps. So yeah, let's say um, maybe right around here. Yeah. Now this will allow us to have a better curve. So if I hit play, notice over here. Yeah, let me, let me. All right, I finally caught it. But look here, this is the signal of the kick that is going boom, 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 boom. So notice right here, we compress the hell out of it. Instead of it going upwards like that, how it usually is, we compress the hell out of it. So we could, we could reduce that, not compress it too hard, and keep it around there. And have this point, which is going to be our cell, our top. We could have it back up here if we want. That way it has its freedom. Or we could change it like that to have a hard compressed type of ratio to it. Notice how you see this purple signal. The purple signal is going to be the input signal, and the input signal is basically what we're already inputting into the sound. 
the white that you see is going to be the output signals. So yeah, if we click on this, that's the output signals. Notice it shows green, but we don't see any green. Why is that? That's because if we have signal that is more than the actual output, or not output, my bad, input, that's when it will show the green. So in this case, I'll raise this bend up here. Notice you can see a little shed of green there. If I show you a more intense um, example, I'll do this. Delete that. Erase this. So notice the green. And if you do something like this, you'll see the ducking. This is ducking. Once again, my bad for the stupid clicking. I can't deal with it. So notice it has a weird, different kind of compression sound than you would usually hear. Right clicking will allow you to do different curves, just like automations or delete the points, by the way. Now you see these little waveforms here. These are actually the curves of the compression. We could adjust it with the attack as well as the release if we do like a thicker compression. So let me do that. Look at the wave right here in comparison to something like this. Look at that. That's not really that great. We wouldn't want it like that. We'll want it something like this, you know. Or that's that's not as great as well. Just like that, that looks clean. It's alright if you want it like that as well, too. So the attack is gonna be the attack release, just like that. The release over here we have curves. So this is gonna give you a different curve setting, like curve right here. Like notice the attack is like that. We could change up the way of the curve like that. Release two is actually releasing after the curve, and then we'll have a different release. If that sounds confusing, yeah, it is. But look at that, all right? The release two is going to be that curve there, and then the release one right here is going to be after that. So this will give you very wonky, interesting effects. The sustain is going to be basically how long you sustain that gain or that compression. So if I hit, if I raise this up, notice how these are a little bit more longer squared. That's sustaining the compression down. So if you use this, it will hold the compression for a longer time before it gets released. And release is actually, you know, this knob that I showed you. If you feel like you're not getting the greatest of signals before, like when you're putting it into compress or you want to adjust it, you could adjust it here via the pre. This is going to be before the compression is applied. Okay. And pulse is going to be after the compression is applied. So if we want to have a higher sound to compress with, to work with, we raise up the pre just like you see here. That's kind of too more too much. So we're, so it's like, all right, this looks good to work with. Let me go ahead and deal with that. I'll just work with this, you know, compress it. We only have a little bit more to go over before, you know, we basically did everything. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Ahead, LMH is low, medium, high, delay. This is going to be the delay. Notice, no, no, notice. Notice how there was a delay in the whole system. That is what this will do. It will delay it for actual, I guess, better compression, better looking results. I don't like it. I don't like it, but you could work with it, play around with it. This mix thing will be like basically mixing around the, I guess, the delay. I don't like it. And over here by the low cut, this is going to be something that has to do with the whole sound overall this is going to be low cutting so if you see here we're cutting off sounds over here is by 50 hertz if you go behind it it goes towards the lower hertz as you see in the top left it says 16 17 18 all the way to 20 everything before 20 we can't really see nor do we hear as human beings so you know exclude it this is ideal if you want to cut off sounds you don't really use in the song and yeah if you're using it in mastering don't really worry about that Lastly, these band slopes, these are going to be the crossfade in between. So yeah, you can't see it, but it's a crossfade in between the sounds. It's just, 
you don't really have to worry about that crap really over here in the actual chart itself we can raise up the pre like this and clicking into it will change the tab so we're going low bam we want to level it out bam just like that this is useful if you want to do an overall sound mastering like check up and keep things balanced how you want it content for your ears the last tabs that we are going to go over is the threshold right here and the cell. These are for saturation. Saturation is basically tube. Um, saturation is like old analog style sounds if you want to keep it like that. This is going to help give, you know, like a grittier feel. The cell is going to be the output. If you are mastering, keep it around negative point or yeah, negative 0 0.1. But if you want to have a like crushing sound, we could put it even lower. So for example, let me go into the low. So you can see how the cell adjusts the threshold and you can hear that little cringy, cringy sound. And the last knob before I get pissed and probably punch my computer screen for this clicking, even though the screen don't got anything to do with it, is the stereo separation. This is more of the imagery. This is going to give you a wide or a narrow feel. So if I show you that example. Notice how it sounds more open, more image, more wide. Where over there is merge, it's in the middle, which, you know, it depends on what you are using to, you know, give you a final outcome of the image. That is basically it. If you want, these are little view indicators to show you signal, the output, input, input, output. You know, the speed will help you change or see the waveform faster or slower. So you see there and one last cool thing hopefully this doesn't screw up is the little spectrogram so notice if i hit play just like the parametric eq2 we'll be able to see those spectral frequencies it only shows in the bands it does not show in the monitor all right guys and girls that is basically it with maximus hopefully this video wasn't fucking annoying because all those damn clicking and i'm a mm. Mm -mm -mm. Thumbs up the video if you like it. Go ahead and subscribe to your boy Justin Amoy if you want to see better videos. Hopefully, I'll be able to invest in a better computer or something. I don't know what the annoying clicking sound is. <sighs> and if you want to see my social links, it's over here at the right side. Go ahead and follow me there if you want to show support, if you want to help your boy out, if you want suggestions, it's all there. So, yes, thank you for watching this video. My name is Justin Amoy. And with that being said, Peace. I'm out.